This is a sermon from St. Paul's Church, Brookfield, Connecticut, transforming lives through Jesus. For more information, go to www.stpaulsbrookfield.com. A few years ago, when I was an interim pastor in the Naugatuck Valley, one of the joys of my ministry was to visit the homebound, the members of the congregation who hadn't been able to be at worship in person for quite some time, for one reason or another. I loved bringing greetings from the congregation and catching them up on the latest news of what was happening. And, and I list, listened to them tell me about, well, how it was when they were there which sometimes was good and sometimes not so good. And uh, that, was, that was one of my greatest joys, though. One of those that I'd visit regularly, we'll call her Gladys, uh, was nearing 100 years old. And Gladys still easily lived at home. She took pride in her independence, and she didn't let life try to convince her that she should feel any differently. But on this particular visit, as we shared cups of tea, something was getting her down. I listened as she spoke with concern about the direction the world is headed. She said, Every day, the news is full of all the horrible things going on all around us. And bad things are happening right here where we live. It's getting so bad, I don't think this world is a good place at all anymore. I knew from my own experience that her concerns weren't only her concerns. As we drank our tea and shared the cookies that she had made for us, I tried to suggest she try a few changes in her routine. Maybe she could watch one fewer news broadcasts each day or change the channel she got her TV news from. She could switch from listening to talk radio and, and try a music station. After communion and prayers, I gave her a devotional book so she could read it each day and you know, get some strength to, to look at the world with a new view. I said I hoped that she'd take my suggestions to heart, but this dear lady was a person of habits. It's how she made her way through one day and into the next. I really doubted she'd change the way she did things at this late date. I asked her to remember when she had been able to come to church and she'd stay for coffee and visit with friends afterwards, she was fed in the spirit and in body each week then. And life had a pattern she looked forward to. I also remembered, reminded her that the world is not like the stories that we see on the TV news or hear about on the radio. The networks and radio personalities and tabloid newspapers search for the most sordid details to report, and that's how they attract viewers, listeners, and readers. We mustn't forget that 95% of us are ordinary people who live honorable lives and respect our neighbors. We are truly in the majority, no matter what the media wants us to think. Gladys lived a healthy life to the age of 104. And when the Lord said it was the right time for her to experience the peace and joy of eternal life, she was grateful as she moved forward. 
Now, you might know someone like Gladys who's feeling doubt and fear about the world today. Jesus certainly knew many people like that. After all, in a land that had been promised as their land of milk and honey, for centuries, they were now dominated by an outside power. Their taxes were high. Their local rulers were selfish tyrants. They were compelled to give up their lifelong religious beliefs and worship an emperor who thought himself God. The rich got richer and the poor got poorer. And many had given up hope that life would ever be peaceful with abundant food and provisions for their daily needs as the psalmists had promised. Such a life was simply a pipe dream. Many just walked through the requirements that their often corrupt religious leaders demanded. More tribute, more sacrifice, more ritual obedience. No wonder so many were giving up on their heritage and wandering along new pathways to live in their nearly hopeless world. It was into such a world as this that Jesus sent his disciples to share the good news of a loving God, to heal their wounds, and to graciously hear their overwhelming doubts and fears that felt like overpowering demons bent on destroying them. On that day, the day that Jesus preached in his hometown, the disheartened listeners scoffed at his talk of a loving God, the one that wanted them to experience joy each day, a God who wanted them to live with a sense of gratitude and purpose, a God who wanted them to understand that they were not alone in this fear-filled world? Who did he think he was, this carpenter, this son of Mary? After all, they'd grown up with him and his sisters and brothers, and they didn't even have enough respect for Jesus to call him Yeshua bar Joseph. No, he was called son of Mary, as if his mother were scum. The very neighbors he had loved the most didn't want anything to do with him. They didn't believe the love and grace he was offering them. They didn't want it, these people he loved. So he would look elsewhere to find believers. Jesus sent his barely trained disciples out to the towns and villages nearby and just a bit farther to share the amazing good news they'd learned to trust. They'd walked with Jesus long enough to know he was someone who could instill hope in the hopeless. Jesus healed wounded souls through the power of his Abba, Jesus fed the multitudes with what God miraculously provided. Jesus provided the needy with loving care. Jesus offered a hopeful new world. What kind of world do you live in? Is it a world of doubt and despair? Is it a world of hope and gratitude? You, yes, you and I and we have been loved by our Lord Jesus. He has equipped you with a staff of graciousness and sent you out into the world. As with his disciples way back then, Jesus doesn't ask you to pack your bags and fill the car's tank with gas, order some giant banners from Staples and to put up on the poles in the next town and, and use a bullhorn to shout your good news for everyone to hear. 
you already have all you need to bring the love of Jesus to the people around you. Share a cup of tea or coffee or beer or even a cool glass of water with someone who needs to be listened to. Take a bag of clothes you no longer wear to the thrift store that offers them at no charge to the needy. Pray for those situations you see on the news or that you hear about in town. Read with a child. Phone a friend for no reason. Buy coffee for the next person in line at the cafe. So what else might you do to share the love of Christ with people you meet? Think about it. Your presence in the lives of these people and your willingness to really listen to what they need to say can reawaken the Spirit's gift of hope in their lives. And as our hymn writer prayed, Jesus will, with the Spirit's gifts, empower us for the work of ministry. Amen. Amen.